Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jolie and today is July 9th. And um, this is the series of videos where we read Al-Anon literature, which is a self-help um, group that um, helps with the um, overcoming the, um, the thinking that we get that's distorted from alcoholism in our life and addiction. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, welcome and thank you for coming. Um, Courage to Change, Hope for Today are the books and One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. So we'll get started. And they're all daily reflections, so they are all on the same page. So today, July 9th, page 191, I'll get with uh, Courage to Change, let's get started. So, um, Life is a package deal. It is not enough to look only at the parts we like. It is necessary to face the whole picture so that we can make realistic choices for ourselves and stop setting ourselves up for disappointment. Living with alcoholics and addicts must, uh, many of us coped with an ever shifting situation in which our sense of reality changed from one minute to the next. We adapted by taking whatever part of reality suited us and ignoring the rest. Again and again, we were devastated because reality didn't go away just because it was ignored. Our lives will remain unmanageable as long as we pretend that only half of the truth is real. That's why sharing in such an important um, uh, way uh, is, is what we do as an Al-Anon tool. Uh, when we share with other members about what is really going on, we cut through our denial and anchor ourselves in reality. While it may be difficult to face certain facts, when we allow ourselves to confront them, we cease to give our own denial the power to devastate us at every turn. I can't cope with something unless I acknowledge its reality. When I am willing to look at the whole picture, I take the first step toward a more manageable life. And then there's a quote from Henry David Thoreau. If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put foundations under them. Foundations. When I came into Al-Anon, I was, uh, I started to realize that um, my life was unmanageable and that was because my foundation was not, was, was shifting all the time and that I didn't have a real solid uh, place in my life, um, in my, even my mind. The denial, I didn't realize was denial. I just thought that that was how, my coping, how I was coping, how I was surviving and um, it may have been when I was um, growing up in this, in the alcoholic home, um, but it doesn't serve and it didn't serve me in my adult life. So that, um, yeah, I'm coping with an ever shifting situation. I can remember when um, uh, my qualifier, um, well, one of my qualifiers, um, my father, right? I talk about him a lot. Um, and I love him so much, uh, God rest his soul. He, um, he, I think, I know that he did the best he could. And I know that now being in the program for a little bit and, and not just about the program, right? That I keep talking about. It's the 12 steps and the readings and listening to other people share that have gone through similar situations so that I can like relate not compare, but relate to what they're saying and then see how my life has um, been affected. And uh, by seeing what the, um, the issues are, then I, can, then I can have the, I can change and have courage to do that because I know that I can, I know that I can uh, with help from my higher power for sure. You know, I pray every day to be led into a new way of thinking so that I um, will leave nothing undone that can change my life for the better. And that's uh, working on myself and to, to be okay with 
having that reality and having that stability and building it, knowing what that means, you know, what that means. So I'm really grateful. That's a, that's a good reading. That was a good reading for me today. And um, how are you doing today? Yeah, I always, um, I have this thing where it's okay not to be okay. I mean, you know, um, just, you know, do what you can one day at a time. And by coming here, and I hopefully that hopefully this is helping um, you to, um, to have this so that you can listen to it at any time. You can start your day at any time. Uh, if you like, you know, even if it's in the middle of the day and you can just start over like, okay, the beginning of the day was shit. I'm going to start it now and start it with the prayer, start it with the reading, um, listening to this, um, to the readings today. So, um, and this in every day, because I show up every day, I upload every day, um, at midnight Eastern standard time. So I encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified every day and just join along. I read every day. So I'm here, uh, reliable and, um, and also I do this for myself first because that's why I started this so that I would show up and read myself, you know, so that I would read this material and get this inside of my denial head, you know, so I can have, I can be okay with, with the day as it, as it comes life on life's terms and um, have ways to solve my problems in new ways that maybe I hadn't thought of. So, oh, at the end, please stay because we say the serenity prayer. So stick with it. Thank you very much for coming. And um, here we go. Page 191 in Hope for Today. I came to Alateen because my father was an alcoholic. Alateen, in case you don't know, is for, the, for teenagers um, who have been affected by alcoholism. So I didn't know about Alateen when I was a teenager, but knowing that they have this, I think it's a really wonderful program for them as well. So, um, so uh, as I was introduced to the Al-Anon ideas in Alateen, but my focus was on the bonding and acceptance of my peers. I always felt out of place at home and at school. In Alateen, I felt as if I belonged. I had wonderful sponsors and many of the teens I met became my friends with whom I enjoyed a variety of outgoings and pursuits. I made the transition into Al-Anon and have been here many years. However, lately I have been feeling as if something is missing. I often come home from meetings feeling empty rather than filled with healthy suggestions and ideas. I feel as if my body was at the meeting, but my mind wasn't really there. I realize I've been considering Al-Anon's primary purpose to be friendship instead of recovery. The reason I come home feeling empty is because I'm usually thinking of where we'll all go after the meeting or whether something or someone might want to go to a movie later. When I'm thinking about personalities, my mind is too full to hear the principles being shared. I don't want to deny myself the possible friendships I can make in the program. I don't want them to be my primary focus either. After all, nowhere in the steps, traditions, concepts of service or slogans does it say I will make friends. Friendships can develop as I devote myself to my recovery. The traditions help me focus on what, excuse me, on why I attend Al-Anon. Each Al-Anon group, this is tradition five, each Al-Anon group has but one purpose, to help families of alcoholics we do this by practicing the 12 steps of AA ourselves, by encouraging and understanding our alcoholic and addictive relatives, and by welcoming and giving comfort to families of alcoholics and addicts. So I can relate to this, yeah. I mean, especially if I were a teenager coming in, but um, since I wasn't, I don't have that experience. Um, so um, the one purpose is to help families of alcoholics practicing the steps and encouraging and understanding the, the alcoholic and addictive relatives so that we can um, 
for me. Uh, this has been really helpful uh, in, um, in understanding my, uh, my qualifiers, my father and my grandfather, uh, my stepmother and myself, also my partners that I've had in the past so that I can, I can have forgiveness and um, compassion for them because of this is a disease of thinking. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's very harmful to, to all the family. And um, in order to find friends, like for me, what I've done is um, it's, it's teaching me how to be a friend, like to uh, show up, uh, to ask someone to coffee or to go to coffee if someone's asked me to go, um, to have regular walks with, with people and to show up, even if it's really early and I'm tired, I still, I still get up and do that because I'm there for them and then I get out of it like the friendship and that regularity, that stability, like in the first reading that um, I was lacking. So um, for me, it's a, it's a practice to see um, over and over again that I am dependable and I, I have the capacity to change in order to and not be in the denial part of my life and to be in the reality of what it, what it means to be a friend and, and to also be of service uh, so yeah, and you know, going, having some outings is also a benefit, you know, that's the fun part, you know, you can go bowling or you can, you know, have like, I'm going to go to a housewarming party on Sunday for one of the members, you know, she just bought a house. And um, at first I was like, do I want to go, you know, it's my only day off and it's in the middle of the day. Blah, blah, blah. And I thought, you know what, show up say you're going to go and show up, you know, that's how you create friendships, right? So that's just my story. That's what I'm doing. So, um, all right. So one more, one day at a time in Alana, and then we'll say the serenity prayer together. So stick with it. Here we go. Page 191. What kind of stuff is self-pity made of that it can entrench itself in my mind and keep me miserable? Um, it may be envy of those who have more of the material things, a better house, a finer car. It could be any resentment of monotony, not having enough relief from the daily grind. Daily grind, right? It may be <laughs> I'm critical of others. Like, why can't he or she do it my way? Why did they say or do this or that? Questions we can ask ourselves. Or bitterness because we're lonely if the spouse has merely switched from nightly sessions at a bar to nightly AA meetings. Self-pity comes from concentrating on the negative aspects of life. I will find ways to make my life more interesting. Take a fresh view of the pleasant things that happen each day. I will work towards a more mature attitude and settle for a little less than my romantic dreams uh, make me think I ought to have. <laughs> so, an Al-Anon meeting is a great place to observe how various people react to their circumstances. Those who have the most to be grateful for often grumble and complain. Others living desperate and even tragic lives somehow keep cheerful and manage to get some joy out of what little they do have. So to expect life to be tailored to our specifications is to invite frustration. Absolutely right. Yeah. All right, so let me lower that. Sorry about the bells ringing here. I'm in denial, I guess, that I don't think that it's going to happen while I'm doing the readings. So anyway, um, yeah, self-pity. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, was I full of that. 
focusing and concentrating on the negative aspects, I felt like that's all I had were negative aspects. And there was no seeing around it. You would be you would be feeling sorry for yourself too if you had my life is what I was thinking. Like, like I can't get out. But you know what? Um, it started getting better. <laughs> I, I really, it's, it's a miracle. It's truly a miracle. Um, like lowering the bar, for instance, of my romantic dreams, right? So, so I wasn't like having this imagination of what others were going to do for me. And I realized that um, I'm not in control of what other people do at all. And um, once I started to dissipate and stop concentrating, I dissipated the negative. I can see it for what it was and stop to um, morbidly, you know, just grind into it, like, like living it, wearing it as a jacket, wearing it as a hat, like, oh, this shit that I've been through, you know, it's just, um, bitterness. And uh, so right, so this is what I'm going to say, this is what I did, I, a lot of praying. When I first came in, there was this thing where I was like, I'm so angry at what has gone on and what happened to me and my, you know, my partner, you know, like, how could this happen? I'm just so mad. How do I stop being angry? You know, because it's consuming me, I can't like get above it. And they said, this is what you have to do. I said, just tell me what to do. They're like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna give you what I do. So it's not, they tell, they don't tell you what to do. They're like, this is what I've done and it really has worked. So you can try it if you want. And it's pray for them. And I was like, hell no, I'm not praying for somebody that I'm mad at. How do I do that? There's no way, I, how do I even imagine that? And they said, just try it worth trying right because how are you feeling now I said I'm feeling terrible because that's all I'm doing is I'm constantly thinking about it I'm, you know I can't get it out of my head and they said well if you pray this is what they do if you pray for the person and I said well, what do I do how do I pray for somebody and they're like well you know all you have to say are a couple things like you pray uh say uh, you name their name so that they can just stay in the prayer and you name their name and you say I pray for God's will for so and so and that's all you have to do that's it I'm like that's all I have to do and they're like yeah that's it I said I don't have to pray for something specific or anything they're like no no specific you know you don't want to spend that much time you just want to like pray for God's will for them and then, uh, but you're supposed to do it for at least two weeks solid. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. They're like, just do it. So I listened to them because um, my life had become unmanageable. So that's the first step. And the second step is came to believe that a power greater than myself can restore me to sanity. So that's praying to a, a higher power, whatever that is for me. And then um, that led me to step three, which was made a decision to turn my life and my will over to the care of the God of my understanding, because I saw that it was working. And that's by bringing that, those, that person, whoever that is, and you can do that, you know, however, you know, as many times as you need it, or as many people you can bring them and you pray for them there. And then the rest of the day is yours. You don't have to think about them. And so that you know, like every day you're gonna pray. So you're gonna bring them there and leave them there. So try it, try it for two weeks. You can do it here with me. So we're gonna start this, the prayer and thank you. And please um, give a thumbs up to let me know that you are here. Um, uh, if you'd love to comment, I would love to see your comment. Um, I have them so that they're they have to be looked at so I because I had some weird some weird 
uh, website people putting some stuff in the in the chat. So I was like, okay, we're gonna have to edit that. But I really would like to see that you're here. And it also helps the algorithm so that when people are looking for, for content like this, it helps to have them find it. So anyway, all right, let's pray. Let's settle in and be present because that's where the, the miracles happen. And in the Course in Miracles today, um, on the um, the other series I do is a court of learning A Course in Miracles. Today was Lesson 99. And Lesson 99 today was um, Salvation is My Only Function Here. And um, Salvation and Forgiveness are the same. They both imply that something has gone wrong, something to be saved from, forgiven for, something amiss that needs corrective change, something apart or different from the will of God. Thus do both terms imply a thing impossible, but yet which has occurred, resulting in a state of conflict, seen between what is and what could never be. It's about truth and illusions are both equal when we are using our own mind, and it's about bringing that to God for God's will. And we pray for those sick and suffering. We bring them here and we name them by name for God's will to be done. God grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will be done, amen. So keep coming back. It works if you work it and I will see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.